Hello, my name is Tom Wostowski. I work at CERN and in this video I'm going to present you a quick tutorial for the new KiCad interactive router tool that we developed here at CERN together with my colleague Maciek Suminski. I'm gonna start by telling you how to enable and set up the router. Then I'll show you the modes of routing such as shove traces, walk around. Then I will explain how to route traces, drag traces and vias. And uh, later on I'm also going to explain the more advanced router configuration options. In order to use the interactive router tool, all you need to do is to download the newest version of KiCad. Under Linux you can use the KiCad install script. Under Windows you can use the KiCad WinBuilder tool by Brian Sidebottom and uh, switch uh, the canvas mode to OpenGL in the view menu by selecting the switch canvas to OpenGL option or by simply pressing F11. Another thing worth paying attention is the minimum clearance setting in the design rules dialog because the router tries to pack the traces and the wires as tightly as possible not violating the minimum clearance. So make sure that uh, the value matches the capabilities of your PCB manufacturer. So the first mode is called Highlight Collisions and it simply marks all the items that violate the DRC with respect to the currently routed trace with a shiny green color. The second mode is called Shove and it pushes and shoves the colliding traces and vias. And the last mode is called walk around and it attempts to find the shortest path between the beginning and the end of the trace without modifying any other objects on the PCB. So let's start routing something. In order to activate the router tool, simply select the add tracks and vias button just as it used to be in KiCad and click on an item to begin a trace. The yellow line will show you the nearest unconnected item. In order to place a via, select the place through via option from the right mouse button menu or simply press V. Pressing V repeatedly will toggle via placement. You can start routing on an already placed track. If the newly routed trace will make the old trace redundant, it will be automatically removed and the removed segments will be indicated for your information with a thin grey line, just like this. The loop removal is done on the fly, so you have everything under control. While routing, you can switch the track width on the fly by using the standard keycat shortcuts, the square brackets buttons. So let's try a bit more of routing so that you can see that it goes pretty fast. Note that the router is automatically snapping to the axis of each trace or to the center of a via, same for the pads, to make sure all the items are connected. If for some reason you don't want this snapping to, to be active, simply press shift while routing and the snapping feature will be disabled.
Now, let's try to drag some traces. But first, let's open a bit more complete PCB. Let's say this one. It's the same board, just rooted before. In order to drag, control click on an item while the router is active. You can do this for segments by clicking at the middle of a, of a trace segment. You can drag trace corners just like this. Or you can drag vias by control clicking on a via. The usual keycard G shortcut will also work. You can also select the drag option from the drop down menu. The last part of this video is the description of the configuration options of the router. In order to configure the router, select the routing options field from the right mouse button menu or simply press the E shortcut. So, from the top to the bottom, the first option is the router mode, that is highlight collision, shove and walk, ar walk around. And there are several other options. The first one is show vias, that enables and disables via shoving. The second one is jump over obstacles, which makes the pushed traces try to jump over... Ah, let's switch back to shove mode to jump over pads and other unmovable items instead of uh, kind of reflecting back. Loop removal that was shown before can be also enabled and disabled through the settings dialog. So when it's disabled, the loops will stay. Might be useful in some cases. The next option is called automatic neckdown. When it's on, the router tries to finish the tracks on pads, preventing ugly finishes such as acute angles. When the option is off, any kind of pad finishes is uh, accepted by the router. Next option, smooth tracked segments. By default it's on and it means that while you are dragging a segment, if the currently dragged segment is very close to another parallel segment in the same trace, the router will try to smooth the line just like this by merging the segments together and the last option allow the DRC violations is only valid for the highlight collision mode and it allows you to add a trace or a via to the board even when it's causing a DRC violation you can also adjust the optimizer effort, but for the moment we recommend it to stay at the high level. Alright, we are done for today, but that doesn't mean we are going to stop developing this router. We are still working on new features like differential pairs, trace length tuning, and of course we are preparing bug fixes and improvements to the already existing stuff. So check out this YouTube channel and the repository on Launchpad regularly. Thank you very much for your attention and I wish the tools we develop here at CERN will boost your PCB productivity. See you next time.